Now, this news will probably shock you because children in Botayman, a town in the capital, Accra, are compelled to walk through a stream to enjoy the right to education. This is because the bridge on the stream collapsed and has been abandoned since then. I spent some time monitoring how these children crossed the stream and filed this report. This is what residents here in Botayman call the Botayman Storm Drain. Some even prefer to call it a river. It is located between Kanewu and this community around the old Zoom Lion Recycling Factory on the Tema Motorway. It flows through Botayman and crosses the motorway through Community 18 into the sea. Young school kids are left with no option but to cross this river every day to school. Kwisi lifts young children who cannot cross the stream on their own. I'm told this is a daily occurrence. Abigail is a basic five people who lives in Botayman and schools at Kanewu near Ashaiman. She's been crossing this river to school for the past two years. She says the situation makes schooling difficult for her and the kids here in Botayman. How dangerous is this passage to your community? Sometimes cars pass here, they fall inside the water. That's what me I say. Wow. What does it mean to you? Uh, do you become afraid to go to school? What, what is it? Please, yes. I'm afraid for that. But if rain for the river, you don't... How the way we will cross the road and go to the school, we don't get it. It is not only Abigail who is concerned. Mr. Soyi is the proprietor of Ask God Preparatory School, the school Abigail attends. He has to carry his students to cross the river on a daily basis. He tells me the problem is forcing many kids to stay home without going to school. This place has been a big challenge, especially the vulnerables. We have a city here or a town here called Botemai. A lot of students are there. Every day, this, you have not even seen anything. If it rains and you, nobody can pass here, meaning all the children have to stay home without learning that day. That is what we are going to do. A whole lot of students are dead in this water. And we have called on speaking out, crying out, no help. So we are still calling on the, our leaders and uh, parents and the whole Ghana, our president, and everybody as a whole, stakeholders, to see to this bridge so that we can save our vulnerables, our future leaders, and make their life bright. How many children have died? You said children have died. How many have died here? Uh, I, if, if I cannot count at all, I think not less than three have witnessed, but there are more than that, far more than that, director. Mm. But as, apart from this, are there no other route that kids can use to go to school? Not at all. This is the only access to this town. There's no road. There's another one here. There, that one today is a gacta. You can cross. So all the children, most children are staying home because they can have access to, uh, to cross the place to school. Young Abigail said she and other children in the community want to go to school and it is their wish that government fixes the bridge for them. Please, we want president to come and do our rail for us because we cannot go to the school. If rain for the road, it's no good for the children to cross the rail. That's what I wanted to say for the president. For Abigail and her friends and all other residents of this community, this is a prayer for a better day to come, for their bridge to be constructed. They can only hope for a brighter day, someday. For Joy News, I am Samuel Kojobreis, Botayman. Now, the communications manager for Action Aid, Esther Ohinewa Brown, joins us for more on this. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. What is your reaction to this story? Well, because you are very much interested in education. Uh, Esther, can you unmute so we can hear what you're telling us? All right, so the question that many of you will be asking, 
What is the assembly doing about this situation? Joining us on Zoom is the MC for Tema West, Anna Adukwe Abdo. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. For how long have you been aware of this situation? Um, thank you very much. Um, I assumed office in October, late last year, October. And as part of my rounds, I saw it. And my attention was brought to the fact that it is indeed an, um, an assembly project, which was supposed to be funded by urban roads. Um, but upon assessment, it was realized that it wasn't just going to be a normal COVID, um, because the, the, the stream had widened up. And so it was referred to Highways Authority for them to handle, since they have that capacity to do so. And um, currently, um, we, we had a meeting with Urban Roads and Highway Authority, and they, they are yet to award the contracts for that bridge to be constructed. But in the interim, um, I have decided that we're going to um, construct a footbridge, a wooden footbridge, and uh, we have initiated the procurement process to do so. Mm. And so by, hopefully by three weeks or in two or three weeks time, we'll, we'll start doing that. Mm. Good to hear this, that within three weeks, you're going to uh, have a footbridge for these students to cross. But yes, a wooden, a wooden footbridge. That, that's, that's good. It's, it's a good yes. uh, interim measure. But what mm -hmm. are we also doing to ensure that the permanent bridge itself is, is constructed within the shortest possible time? And we are, we are liaising with, with um, um, urban roads and, and highway authority. Um, they, we, I've seen this, and this is very serious. That is why we have decided that this is what we can do in, in the interim, whilst they also sort themselves out. Mm. All right, uh, grateful. It will, the next three weeks, we'll be monitoring to see where this uh, takes us. But, 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 but again, uh, the, the, you, the people who are, who are living in uh, Botteyman, who are, who are watching now, would want to know, okay, so if the MC is saying that three weeks' time, the bridge will be constructed, when are we starting? So we can, we can monitor to know that, indeed, this is going to come into fruition. Um, we'll be starting um, before the end of the month. Before the end, to me, today today is first um, of August. So hopefully, by um, uh, before the end of the month, we should be able to start the process. I am very much interested in this, and uh, it's very dangerous for the young ones crossing, especially when it rains as well. So uh, you will see. I'm I'm not even sure that it will get you three weeks. We will we'll see action very soon. Well, well, you 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 told us that. Uh three weeks time, the bridge will be up. But you're again telling us you start before the end of this month, which means that by three weeks time- I'm saying that we have, we have initiated the procurement process. Okay. And so um, after everything is done, we move on to the side, definitely move on to the side in three weeks time. That's mm. the clarification. So from now to the time that this bridge will come, which is of course a good thing for us to have it, what yeah. is the assembly going to do to help these kids? These are young kids crossing the stream every day. It's a dangerous activity for them to be undertaking. We, we, um, tomorrow morning, I'll go back and do sensitization uh, um, for, the, for the people over there. And I also take my, my tax force to also help them, the security guards to help them in case there's any problem um, that, that might happen. Is this something that's going to be permanent until that bridge is constructed? It's going, it's going to be, it's, it is going to be permanent, sir. Okay. We'll be there to monitor this, uh, this, this progress. I'm grateful that you found time Thank to join us. That much. is the MC for Tema West, uh, Anna uh, Adukwe Addo. There. Let's uh, return to Action Aid and speak to the communications manager who is joining us on phone. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, you are an interested organization in education. Uh, what's your reaction to seeing these young school kids crossing the stream every day to, to be able to go to school? Well, thank you very much, uh, Kujo. I, I think that uh, this is very heartbreaking, uh, watching these young children uh, try to access education, which actually um, the Constitution provides uh, that for them. I mean, it gives them the right to 
have equal opportunities, uh, access to education. If you look at Article 25.1 of, 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 of the 1992 Constitution, it's just unfortunate that in a country that has signed on to the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which looks at uh, Goal 4, which looks at inclusive education, ensuring that every individual in the country has access to education, is actually uh, putting impediments in the way of these children uh, who cannot have access to the education that they are supposed to have. Um, I think that this is something that we need to look at immediately and try and um, address the challenge that we have. Uh, I do not see why it should take them the, uh, the Tema Municipal Assembly so long to address this. If you listen to the owner of the school, he talked about the fact that they have taken uh, steps to uh, get the attention of authorities to address this particular challenge. And it, it, it tells you the kind of society that we live in, a country that does not pay attention to the very things that are very important to everybody in the country. So we need to take immediate action so that we do not have children staying at home just because of this particular uh, storm drain that has not been fixed over the period. Mm. You heard the MC say that, that uh, within the next three months or end of the month, they, they, they will raise a foot bridge. And, and again, from tomorrow, uh, she's going to put some guards there to assist the children. In the interim, how do you measure this uh, strategy they are putting in place? I think that uh, in the next three months, it's a bit uh, too long. Now, she she, said, she says the, in the next three weeks. The next three weeks. I think I still think that um, uh, this thing should have been addressed um, yesterday. You know, mm. it's not something that we need to be pushing people to do that. This is the life of young children. I'm watching them and it's like my younger self a couple of years ago. So mm. if these were the children of the president, if these were the children of the ministers of state, if these were the children of the MCE herself, I'm not, I'm not sure that we would have uh, taken too long to fix this particular uh, storm drain. We should take immediate action. Um, I think she should be giving herself maybe a week to get the team to fix it. Uh, so that these children cannot risk their lives basically because they want to have access to education, which is their fundamental uh, human right. And we all need to uphold that um, as a country. Thank you so much for finding time to join us here. Um, Esther is the communications manager with the Action Aid. Let's still stay with education because kindergarten pupils at the Fanyinama Basic School in the Kintampo North Municipality of the Bono East region have been forced to study under tree several months after a rainstorm destroyed the school's KG block. The school is also without toilet facilities, forcing the over 600 pupils and teachers of the school to resort to open defecation. Authorities say the current situation is affecting general academic activities of the school and are appealing to government and philanthropists to intervene. And as Sabit has more. This is the Fainama Basic School. The school located a few meters away from the Kintampo North Municipal Assembly currently has a population of over 600 pupils. KG1 and 2 pupils of the school are currently forced to study under trees several months after parts of this pavilion accommodating them had its roof ripped off by torrential rainstorm. Florence Anoma is the head of the KG department of the school. And the reason is our structure, the KG structure, it's at the death trap, so you can't stay there. That's why we are under the tree. Uh -huh. Because if anything happens, it will cause damage to the children. So we have to come to sit under the tree till they finish the structure for us. She says the current situation is heavily affecting academic activities, especially during the rains. Um, mostly it affects the way we teach because under the tree there is no board for you to write on unless you go and bring the children their exercise book for them to write after that you send it back. When it's about to rain, we join the primary children in the class. After the rain then we cruise. Because the place is so wet, you can't come and sit under the tree. Uh -huh. For the assistant headmaster of the school, O.T. Joseph, his greatest worry has to do with the fact that some parents have decided to take away their walls from the school due to the current situation. When somebody comes 
and he sees the condition of the, uh, the, the, the school, he may not like to bring the award here. And some people have also taken their awards away because of the situation. So actually it is affecting enrollment. Among the school's tall list of challenges is the absence of a toilet facility for the over 600 pupils and teachers of the school. Michael Hapori is the headmaster of the school. He laments that the pupils of the school are resorting to open defecation, which is affecting the people living in the area. Here we face a lot of challenges. Um, one is that our classrooms are overpopulated. They are overcrowded, uh, which makes uh, uh, teaching very difficult. Um, the other challenge is about our toilet facility, because the school has been established for decades ago, and up to now, uh, they don't have, we don't have any toilet facility. Not even a single one. Not even a single one. So anytime the children want to ease themselves, free themselves, they have to uh, go f uh, to the bush. And even uh, some three days ago, a woman came here complained that they've been easing around her house. So we should, we should warn the children not to come again. So it's also a very big challenge. This is affecting teaching and learning as several teaching hours are lost as teachers travel to their homes whenever they have to attend the nature's call. In fact, when, it's, uh, when it comes to the teachers, some of them have to travel back to their homes to go and ease themselves and come. And this takes a lot of time. The children to some also cross the road to the other side of the road to ease themselves in the bush. And this, there was a time a child was knocked down by a vehicle through that uh, activity. So it's, it's a very big challenge. Uh, and the children to, because they go to the bush, they have to travel far. And this sometimes will be class, the, the teacher will be in the classroom and the child will have to travel to a very far place to ease himself or herself before he or she will come back. And this has been posing a lot of challenges to, to rest. Michael Hapori, however, disclosed that even though the assembly sent experts to assess the situation, nothing is being done about it. The MC also made his people to come and uh, look at a site for a toilet. But since then, we've not heard anything from them again. He therefore appealed for support from municipal authorities and other philanthropists. Our plea that they should come to our aid by way of uh, getting us additional classroom blocks, uh, toilet facility um, to make our work easier for us. Amar Sabit, Joy News, Kintampo. Now, Minister for Communications and Digitalization, Esla Osu Ekufol, cited delays with the issuance and distribution of Ghana cards to subscribers as one of three challenges hampering the smooth running of the re-registration exercise. According to her, more than 832,000 cards that have been printed have not been claimed by their owners. Self-service SIM registration app will be ready for commercial launch on Tuesday, 2nd August as the virtual private network connectivity and API integration with all MNOs was only completed this weekend due to unavoidable circumstances. Adequate time will also be required for the publicity and public education on the use of the self-service SIM registration app, which will enable you to register yourself in the privacy of your own homes without having to queue or go to any network operator. Delays in the issuance of the Ghana card was the largest single challenge bedeviling this exercise. And my information is that the NIA has not been able to issue all eligible persons with a Ghana card. And that as of Thursday, July 21, 2022, 16,969,034 individuals have registered for the Ghana card with about 16,535,623 cards printed, 15,702,719 cards have been issued and distributed, whereas some 832,904 cards have not been distributed or collected by those 
who applied for them. Now, digital marketing strategist Maximus Ametogo is against government's plan to charge five cities for same re-registration. He insists that the registration must be free. It's long overdue. They should have done this from the beginning, from the onset, that you have an app that people can use to do their registration, and then those who can't find time to go and do the registration can also walk into the, the various service centers of the telcos to do their registration. For me, what I don't agree with is the amount they are charging. It's not, uh, I think it's not, uh, how do I put it? It's not right to charge people five CDs to register a SIM card. Mm -hmm. I think they should make it free so more people can register. So they will not use that pricing to get off a lot of people. They should just make it possible that if I go to register my Ghana card, there should be a SIM registration stand there so that I can equally register instantly after I've done my card. I don't see why that shouldn't be possible. And in fact, this should have been done long ago that if I register my Ghana card, my number that I used to register the card should automatically be verified from that system without me needing to go and give my bio data and other biometric information all over again to a different organization. And then the card that I use, the, the number I use to register the card is what I use to register the, 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 the number again. again. It doesn't make sense. Technology is supposed to make things very simple and easy and convenient for people. But the inconvenience of this process is, is not encouraging. It's, it's, it's expensive. You see, when you say you're solving a, 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 a cyber crime problem, we are talking about millions of dollars. Designing an app that people will use to just do a registration shouldn't cost you a million dollars. So if you are going to make it difficult for people to pay five cities, maybe we have four million people who haven't registered for, for their, they haven't linked their Ghana card. Four million times five million is how much? 20 million, I'm not sure an app will cost two million to, to design and manage. So why don't you do it for free? The telcos have done it. They've done a simple portal for the registration and then you continue the process later. I think it's, it's better to do that for free or get field officers who use the app to do people uh, to do the registration for people so that you take the registration centers to the people instead of them going to the registration center. So how are Ghanaians reacting to this uh, comment by the minister that now you'll be, you'll be charged five cities for using the app to re-register. Now, to some of your comment on, on Facebook, and Stephen Carvey says, you can't just come out and say Ghanaians should pay five cities without that same Ghanaian knowing where the money is going. Tell us where the money is going so we can all follow you. Al-Hassan Rufai says, you are running too fast. Are you aware how Ghanaians are passing through stress and hardship? Have you ever thought how parents struggle to feed their families? Do you know how long it takes to stay in queue before registering a Ghana card and MTN? Humble yourself. Why? And feel small for the people. Uh, Sylvester Ezra also says, there are situations where the system refuses to accept the Ghana card number, so registration will not be successful. So if one has to try another time, does it mean he has to keep on paying five cities, he asked. That's Sylvester Ezra's comment there. So that's uh, some of the comment that you shared with us on Facebook. Now, still staying with the registration, the number of people queuing to register their SIM cards have reduced at the premises of telecommunication service providers in Kumasi. This is after the registration exercise, which was to end last month, was extended for two months. Nanea Ojima visited some registration centers and filed this report. Few days to 31st of July, that is when the SIM re-registration was supposed to end. A number of people would come to the MTN office here at Aija to get the service rendered to them. A lot of people would, it wouldn't even get space within the tents that have been created for them. There were overflows, but 
today, that is the 1st of August, when the re-registration exercise has been extended, a lot of people wouldn't come or the numbers are not as encouraging as we saw last week. There are still a number of empty spaces within the tents that have been created for um, the re-registration exercise. But the service provider here, that is MTN, is ensuring that whoever gets comes here gets the needed um, service that they came here for. They've deployed a lot of staff who will be going through the seats, trying to engage people and help them go through the process. Let's speak to some of the people who have come for the service to be rendered to them. I'm a Ghana card, Mistiku. So he says he had some issues with his um, Ghana card. He had to rectify them. And um, the National Identification Authority wouldn't do it in time for him to register his SIM. So um, now he's using the old one, that is the one with the error in the name, to register and subsequently rectify the Ghana card so that it will affect the uh, registration that he's doing here. What's the key clarification that we go through? Ah. She has done hers. She just got herself a new SIM card and she would want to register that as well. So that's why he's here today. So from what I've witnessed here today, it takes less than 10 minutes to get your SIM card re-registered here at Aja. That's the MTN office at Aja. Now, it's unclear why we are not seeing the huge numbers that um, we witnessed here last week. The MTN officials here believe that um, if people should wait till the last day for the extension, um, it will be a challenge for them to get hooked onto um, the system or for their SIM cards to be re-registered for them. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima Kumasi. Now, government must take steps to address the growing grievances of members of the Fulani ethnic group in the country. This is a call made by a respected and influential Ghanaian-based Fulani imam, Sheikh Sidi Dekure. According to him, harassment of Fulani communities by local law enforcers and targeted communal mob violence, followed by the lack of justice, is increasing the sense of victimization and exclusion among Fulanis. He is therefore calling on Ghanaian authorities to resolve the growing violence against the local populations of Fulani by protecting them as equal members of society. Join us as correspondent Elias Sutanko has more. Around 2014, the government of Burkina Faso asked a respected Fulani religious leader based in Ghana to help provide transhuman headers who migrate seasonally to Ghana with Burkina Bay national identity cards so they will be hassleless at border crossings. The Sheikh obliged and travel across Ghana collecting headers information later distributing the cards. He estimated that he had helped register a few hundred people, all of whom listed him as their emergency contact. Four years later, the Burkina Bay military killed five jihadist militants in a firefight. When the military checked their identification, they noticed the jihadists had all listed the sheikh as their emergency contact. The Burkina Bay intelligence agencies alerted the Ghanaian government, which arrested him in a special military operation by a joint defense and security forces at his base in the northern region town of Karga and brought him to Accra for questioning. Four years later, after his incarceration behind bars for two weeks and subsequent discharge, the Sheikh agreed for the first time to a media interview. His name is Sheikh Sidi Dukri, a member of a well-known religious family in Burkina Faso who has moved to settle in Ghana. I asked him about his view on the situation in the Saharan Sahel region and how Ghana could be impacted. The jihadists are attacking the areas that have been neglected by their country's government, economically isolated areas where the people are impoverished. You can travel several miles without seeing any architect of the state, no schools or health centers. This is the reality in Mali and Niger. Now, road safety analyst Cecil Gabra is advising drivers to pay attention to traffic indications on the road, especially when approaching pedestrian crossway. According to him, the growing disregard for these road safety regulations is a major cause of pedestrian knockdowns contributing to the higher cases of accident on the road. He spoke in an interview with Joy News. So slow down, start slowing down 
uh, I'll say 100 meters to the action place that's a pedestrian crossing. And then for the pedestrians, they should wait for all the vehicles to stop before they start crossing. Because if it's a dual carriage road, then that's where the problem lies, where um, those in the um, inner lane have stopped and then the outer lane will not stop and there will be a run over. Okay, so that's the first trick number one. Never run to cross the traffic light. Always walk, but um, don't use your phone whilst you are crossing the road. That's also one thing with pedestrian. Pedestrian safety is very good and uh, it's something that we always need to talk about. And I think I'll just add this one. Don't be listening to loud music. Sometimes you block your ears with these big headphones and all of that. You can't hear anything and you're crossing the road. Very, very true. So stop listening to music. Stop talking on your phone. Mm. It's even risky to talk on the phone whilst you're crossing the road. Remember, I call them the operation directors on the motorcycles. They can easily take your phone and then off they go. You cannot chase them. Right. I mean, once we are talking about uh, pedestrian, we should also talk about pedestrian safety and uh, security. Remember to cross the road at the right place. Don't walk anywhere. When you are walking, walk and meet the oncoming vehicles. That is the trick. A quick break. When we return, we'll bring you latest from the world of business. Stay with us. Hello, good afternoon. It's time to do business. My name is Beverly Broom. The Design and Technology Institute, a TVET training institute, has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The MOU is meant to strengthen the implementation of the precision quality curriculum and help the university produce excellent professionals in the TVET space. The main aim of the MOU is to help the university produce excellent professionals in the TVET space. Chief Executive of DTI, Ms. Constance Elizabeth Swanica, said the action is going to bridge the gap between academia and the world of work. She emphasized on the need for industry professionals to work closely with the universities to train industry-ready students. Under the project, DTI will recruit and train 1,000 youth in precision fabrication and work readiness and improve on the work skills and practices of 500 master craft persons and 1,000 SMEs through the Precision Quality Training Program. And so today I present to you curriculum that I designed alongside industry professionals that I worked with to bring to institutions such as um, KNUSD and other technical universities to bring you industry-ready insights of what industry is looking for. I think one of the most powerful things that we realize that once you have a growth mindset, anything is possible. And so the precision quality curriculum that I'll present to you today is all about soft skills. For me, this is even more powerful than hard skills. Most employers complain that young graduates come out and they can't even speak. They're not articulate. They don't have emotional intelligence. You know, um, the sort of skills that industry requires that school would have taught you. And so the PQ uh, curriculum, the precision quality curriculum, is how do we train our young people to have what we call a precision quality mindset? that everything that we do should have this ethos of what precision and quality looks like. Especially when we're working with high quality industries. You have graduates that would have you know, come out of the School of Engineering and would be working and you would expect that you know, they can work with artisans who they're supposed to be managing. But rather you have artisans who are telling these so-called managers what to do. And so that there's an issue. Um, and so we'd hope that with the signing of the MOU, this is just to strengthen the need for universities to please pay attention to the crucial need to transition young people properly into the world of work. The Pro Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Ellis Ousudabo, 
expressed his gratitude and highlighted that this is a step towards achieving the university's goal of empowering students with industrial competence. And so we believe that it's a model of quality incubator and demonstration. And we want to assure you that this is only adding up to what we have. Indeed, we have several of such models in this university at the moment because of the seriousness of what we do. We have what we call the Enterprises Development Board. There's an industry liaison officer who is liaising between our good selves and the industry. We have the incubator unit. Um, and students increasingly are demonstrating their entrepreneurial skills. We believe that this is the way by which we can stem the tide of this increasing unemployment. Reporter for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. As Ghana embarks on an industrialization agenda to transform the economy, some investors are calling on the government to devise strategies to benefit from digital manufacturing solutions. According to Sales Director for Sinus Ghana Limited, Justin Liu, this will support the country to achieve utmost production, efficiency and enhance overall output. He was speaking to Joy Business at the launch of Sinus Swallow Maker. Digital manufacturing technologies link systems and processes across all areas of production to create an integrated approach to manufacturing from design to production and on to the servicing of the final product. At the launch of the Cenex Swallow Maker Machine, Sales Director Justin Liu said local manufacturing companies should leverage digital technologies to benefit their manufacturing operations. From the terms of technology views, that's at the core of a Cenex brand, actually. Um, example, uh, based on our um, owner, our chairman's uh, his uh, uh, philosophy, we want to let the product speak first, between before we really do the TV commercials, all these marketing activities, the technology important. Also, we need to provide affordable technology. Let the people to enjoy the technology to bring the, in car, the, the convenience and the innovation to the daily lives. Marketing manager for Senex Ghana, Sefa Richard said, manufacturers can create a factory that is connected, networked and fully integrated environment, enabling them to use real-time data analytics to optimize the entire manufacturing process and realize productivity gains. Dave, you and I believe that when it comes to technological advancement, there is, the earliest reception is normally not favorable, you understand? But in due course of time, the result speaks for itself. In the sense that, well, we have a lot of criticism coming in that we are trying to, you know, um, dilute the or maybe reprogram the minds of Ghanaians as to how to prepare the food, our local and traditional food. Digital manufacturing enables manufacturers to eliminate bottlenecks, reduce inventory, improve quality, shorten time to market, and expand the number of products made. That's it for business now. We have more business stories when you log on to myjoyonline.com. Up next is sports.